Since you're a consequentialist, do you think the Imperium of Man was justified in becoming the fascist empire they have in order to survive in their galaxy? But the fascism makes it harder for them to survive. That's the thing, right? Like, if you read the books in 40k, the Imperium's hyper-authoritarian repressive tendencies consistently f*** it over and make it harder. The paranoia of the Inquisitors and the government make it difficult for people to, like, you know, trust them and work with them. It leads to cults fostering that people are unhappy and miserable in hive cities, which is why you get like these cults because they have nowhere else to do. Like I, some level of authoritarianism might be justified in text, but the Imperium does a horrible job managing itself. You know, like pound for pound, the Tao do a much better job and they're a lot less insane with how they do their authoritarianism. Ignoring oh, shit. the disappointment and tone shift from the first game, in a vacuum thoughts on StarCraft II trilogy story. Uh, dog shit. StarCraft II t trilogy story is like Marvel, but worse. It's Marvel, but worse than Marvel. Um, StarCraft I story, like, leaps and back. Dude, remember when the end of Mengst in Star StarCraft II was one reporter held up a iPhone hold playing the audio of him saying he will not be stopped, he will rule the sector as he burnt to ashes? I'll take your word for it. I'm huge into Warhammer Fantasy, but could never get into 40k. Warhammer Fantasy as IMO leagues ahead of 40k. I think that's a defensible belief. Like, can you imagine if there was a self-serious, like, fucking side? Like, imagine if the f part three of Dune, it, like, ends with fucking Atreides getting overturned because a reporter holds up a phone where he said some Hitler shit, like, a while ago. I don't know. Nah, the StarCraft 2 story is dog shit. StarCraft 1 is so much better. Yes. Verps, I just spent all my money on Honkai Star Rail Battle Pass, and now I am broke. Can you help me? Uh -huh. and nobody... I will keep sending Donos until this is fixed. Nobody can help you after that. Isn't Honkai Star Rail literally just Genshin Impact, but worse? Like, what's the benefit of Honkai Star, Star Rail over Genshin Impact? Given that I know nothing about either of them. I just can't imagine playing gacha games, you know? Like, there are so many games out there that don't exploit you in that way. Turn- it's turn-based? Oh, so it's like Genshin Impact, but worse? That's crazy. Fosh, what is the worst type what? of gamer brain rot someone can have? Gotcha game brain rot. Paradox game brain rot. FIFA NBA 2K brain rot ECT. Nothing beats Paradox game brain rot. That shit literally turns people into Nazis. God damn it. Uh, nah, I'm not really a visual novel kind of guy. I need gameplay to stimulate my big mushy brain. I like watching Joseph Anderson play visual novels. I saw him play Slay the Princess, which I was a little disappointed by, but it was still cool. I feel like the main reason people like Slay the Princess is because they're really, like, fairly horny about the princess. Which is an understandable and morally defensible reason to have opinions on something, but it wasn't enough for me. Oh, Slay the Princess, sorry, yeah. Vosh, if you want a good D&D module to run. Run Curse of Strahd. <laughs> My friends are running Curse of Strahd. I, I don't- I would never run a module. I just- I like homebrewing too much. Okay, I am curious. Give us the pitch for your homebrew world. <laughs> no. I've talked about it before. Um... But, uh... No, I don't want to do a big ramble for that. I appreciate the interest, though. The homebrew D&D campaign premise is basically that... Um, there's an archipelago that's been surrounded by a storm for thousands of years. Uh, nobody even bothers trying to go in there because it's a guaranteed death sentence. And everyone understands that inside is the remnants of an ancient, ancient empire that once dominated the whole planet thousands of years ago. A kind of, like, eldritch uh, hive mind from a god that, like, we have distant archaeological records of, but we don't know much about today. And suddenly, about two years ago, the storm dropped, and every navy, pirate, and mercenary guild in the world raced in there to see what was up. And what they found was that the Empire was well and truly gone, just its ruins were left. But of course, the further they progressed into the archipelago, the more they found the Empire was in fact not gone. More like it was sleeping this whole time. And, um... The, uh, uh, the mercantile groups and pirate crews and all the others start getting, like, picked off with more and more regularity that all these like giant navies that were originally like uncontested fighting over wealth to despoil and take back to their home territories uh it turns out that there's actually like quite a bit dangerous left in there um the party were a group of conscripts on one such ship the leviathan which was basically uncontested in the waters for its strength when they get whisked away and separated from the main group of um 
pirates they're with, and they get sort of embroiled as chosen ones in a broader plot to stop the god from succeeding in casting a spell that would essentially end the world. The basic premise is that the god Dagon is slumbering in a deep city deep beneath the water, and um, the uh, uh, the god is a, a, a fetal god, like uh, not really conscious or thinking, but still very strong. And it was accidentally uh, displaced in a planar sense. Oh, there's a rat. The god was supposed to be a part of the far realm, but ended up being transplanted for some reason, we don't know, onto the material plane. The god basically just wants to recreate uh, the embryonic conditions that it was meant to incubate in, and so wants to transform the earth into something more like the far realm. Not the earth, Faerun, sorry. The problem is the far realm is completely inhospitable to life as, as is understood, so the god's spell to, uh, and to uh, you know, make itself at home is basically just a spell to end the world. The entire Dagonic Empire uh, that the god created was basically just a way of it creating the uh, altars and magical condu uh, conduits necessary to create the spell. Anyway, yeah. So basically, the spell is still ongoing, and the only reason the uh, storm uh, has dropped is because the spell is basically in its final, uh, in its final like casting stage. Everyone thought they were done with the Dagonic Empire, but in reality, the Dagonic Empire, as far as it's concerned, just won thousands of years ago. Uh, it consolidated everything it needed to, and since then it's just been building up that one big spell that'll turn all of Faerun into its embryonic conditions. And, um, it's, uh, like a last-second race to try to, uh, stop the world from ending. The party has met with, uh, a Dagonic servant that is actually allied to the, uh, humans, or to the, uh, sentient Thank races. Thank you. Sounds like One Piece meets Lovecraft. I like it. Someday I will rant about one of my homebrew to a group of people. Thank you, I appreciate that. And yes, One Piece meets Lovecraft feels like a pretty, uh, a pretty good way of going about it. A pretty good description. Uh, the party is actually currently in it, like, a very big climactic moment in the party. Or, sorry, in the, uh, in the campaign. What's your favorite type of player to have at the table for D&D? Oh, I, I don't know. What's, what's a type of player? I don't know. An enthusiastic one? Not too enthusiastic, though. Probably a communicative player. I mean, like, if you're a D&D &D player, you have to engage with roleplay, and you have to enjoy engaging with roleplay. That's one thing I'll never get. The kind of player who will, like, enjoy playing games, but they basically just sit there quietly and don't, like, interact. Like, it's literally a roleplaying game. You have to roleplay. Like, you have to talk. You have to enjoy talking. Like, when, I, when I'm pl a player in a D&D &D campaign, which I rarely am, but when I am, I am engaging. I am fucking doing riffs. What if talking hard, like 2R2 normally? I don't know why you're playing D&D. <laughs> if, if, you, if you find it difficult and don't enjoy that kind of roleplay, I genuinely don't understand what the... what the poll is. What's your advice for those wanting to DM a D&D game for the first time ever? Should they prep much or just go for it? Different DMs have different styles. I tend to do very little prep. I don't think you should prep a ton, though, because you can't really prepare for the dumbass shit your players are going to do. Just have a good hook, a few good characters, uh, an idea of the direction you want to take things, uh, and make sure that you know stuff that your players don't know. Like, make sure you don't just drop the world and the description and the people and what they want right there. Always have, like, a twist or a, uh, not necessarily a twist, but make sure there's, like, a big, like, sort of churning, uh, you know, storm of information out there that you're, you're sort of, like, ready to deploy if it should be necessary or interesting or, like, plot convenient or whatever.